tonight the plan was to use a 50mm lens on my Canon 40D, piggyback it on the 8-inch Newtonian in the observatory over there and capture a wide field view of of the Seda Deneb region in Cygnus with all the wonderful nebula there. Even though my camera's not modded, I thought I'd give it a go anyway. So the plan was to capture like the American nebula, the Pelican, the, um, the Vale, Crescent, the Seda region as well. But I can't see it because since I last came out, the foliage on the trees in my neighbour's gardens kind of filled out and I've not got much of a view to the east now. But higher up above that tree, quite high in the sky, is Vega, the highest star of the, of the summer triangle. So nestled between the two stars below that is the planetary nebula M57. So what I could do is a plan B and use my ZWO planetary camera on the 8-inch reflector and try and capture a tight coned in view of the ring nebula which is a very small object so i'll be able to get some kind of image scale with that small sensor of the planetary camera and just kind of do some lucky imaging and uh, stack some shortish exposures and see what i get the main obstacle will be actually getting it on the sen small sensor but if i can do that i should be able to get something because it's a reasonably bright object you can see it visually in quite small telescopes so i should pick it up on quite short exposures yeah i'm fairly sure we can see vega from where that telescope is so m57 it is because I know exactly where the Ring Nebula is, I'm not going to set up Go to. Uh, that's kind of how I roll, really. If I think I can find it by eye, I'll do it. Um, so all I need to do now is connect the PMC8 software up. So if we open that up, actually, let's go on the internet connection first and see if I can recognise it. Yep, there we go. Connect. Fingers crossed. It's a Wi-Fi mount this, the PMC-8, Exos 2 PMC-8. So it does rely on getting connected to begin with, but as soon as it connects to the software, it will side really track. So that's what I'm after, really. I'm not worried about setting up GoTo to track down M57 because I know exactly where it is. I can probably just find it in an eyepiece and then just switch over to the planetary camera. Okay, well I found it using a 15mm eyepiece and I've got a really good view of the Ring Nebula. It's kind of a, a grey with a hint of blue smoke ring, that's what it looks like. You can see it with direct vision in an 8 inch telescope. And my Bortle 5 stroke 6 skies. It's a nice sight, I don't have to use averted vision to get a good look at it. It's one of my favourite planetary nebula because it's just so easy to find. It looks really cool. So if I get this in the centre of the field of view in the eyepiece, I should be able to swap out the eyepiece for the planetary camera and then all I need to do is focus and I can get going with imaging it then. Oh my god, I've just been speaking to the camera for like five minutes and I thought I'd better check the tally light. It wasn't on, was it? It wasn't recording any of it. Anyway, as you can see, hopefully, I've got M57 in the centre of my frame in sharp cap. And I'm capturing 4.2 second exposures. And it's staying nicely in, in the frame. There's a bit of wobble left and right with a periodic error of the mount, which is understandable. There's no guiding going on. And I'm just capturing 30 frames at four seconds. Yeah, I was, I was saying to the camera that wasn't recording, I was saying that does anyone else feel after a night out under the stars imaging or just observing or anything just out under the stars, does anyone feel kind of more relaxed the next day? Because I kind of find that I do and if I don't get out there for a while I almost feel slightly agitated but I'm looking forward to feeling good tomorrow because 
It looks like touch wood. I'm having a successful imaging session. And I think the only thing I'd say about imaging the ring nebula as a beginner is a lot of beginners use DSLRs like I still do as well. And that's got a really big sensor on it. And I've, done, I've imaged them 57 years ago with a DSLR. It looks tiny in the field of view. It's like a little dot. <laughs> so I think these modern planetary cameras are the way to go for these small planetary nebula and globular clusters, small targets like this. They're just sensitive enough to do it now. The proof will be in the pudding though when I post a picture. Hope it's good. Fingers crossed and I'll show you that shortly if it is. Okay. Well, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video hopefully. Oh, um, I'm now on Instagram actually, I've pointed that out, I've joined the 21st century finally. Um, so I'm at DIY.astro, because DIY Astro had been taken, so it's DIY.astro on Instagram. And I'm also, I've got a general account on Instagram called Lockies Picks as well but I've got an actual channel Instagram now as well, which is the DIY.astro. So feel free to drop by there. I've put a few of my old pictures on there from times gone by. And I've got affiliate links first like Optics, who are now I'm going to start working for next week. So things have really looked up for me. <laughs> big time, big time, just really have, yeah. It's amazing, yeah, and to be honest, the support of everyone's been brilliant, so thanks so much everyone, it's been great. Anyway, before I well up, I'll carry on with this and I'll hopefully show you a picture. Catch you soon, see you later.